gonna go ahead and do my little quick blurb and then I will hand it over to Katie. So happy Wednesday, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's webinar. And like I just said, today's presenter is Katie Lebez. You will receive a link to view the recording within 24 to 48 hours. And also don't forget to check out the information for the TWI and Kata Summit that is coming up in March. And right now, I will go ahead and head it, hand it over to Katie. Um, Katie, we do have a couple more people that are still logging in, but you can go sure. ahead and introduce yourself if you like. Absolutely. So thanks, everybody, for joining me today. Our topic today is how to improve absolutely anything. My name is Katie Lebeds, and I am a certified Lean Six Sigma Master Black Belt and certified project manager through PMI. I am the author of the book, How to Improve Absolutely Anything, and I have over 20 years experience in continuous improvement Lean and Six Sigma. I am the president of my own consulting firm for continuous improvement, and our firm's name is Learning to Lean. So thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so excited to be able to, to have you here and to talk about what I'm most passionate about is continuous improvement and improving things in your life at work and at home. So we're going to go ahead and just jump in and get started. So I want you to think to yourself, have you ever thought, gosh, I am not an organized person. I never have been, and I never will be. It's kind of defeating, isn't it? Let me ask you a few questions. Does your desk or computer or desktop look like this? Uh, and post-it notes everywhere, or you have probably a million icons on your desktop. And if I came to visit you, you'd say, oh, but I can find them. I know where everything is. Uh, but you can't actually see what the wallpaper is in the background because you have so many things on your desktop. Or maybe this is a picture of your basement or a, your storage unit. Uh, and let's be honest, you moved, oh, probably 10, 15 years ago, and your moving boxes are still there. Things are kind of scattered everywhere. And quite honestly, when your family goes and tries to find something down there, they never put it back where they found it to begin with. Or maybe this is me peeking around the corner in your garage to see all of that stuff. Garages are meant for us to be able to park our vehicles in as long as they fit. Uh, but obviously for somebody here, uh, that garage uh, is just another storage unit with drum sets and mops and brooms and bicycles and extra cabinets and things like that. And we're going to talk about today how to overcome this and how to get organized in three easy concepts for it. Maybe your kitchen looks like that. Let's let's be honest, right? It's hard to keep the kitchen clean all the time. And it's you putting your head in your hands above the sink because you are not only homeschooling your children, but you're trying to figure out what you're going to make for dinner tonight and feed your children and your family and the snacks and the dishes, et cetera. And boy, can that get overwhelming. Does any of this resonate with you? If it does, then today is a fantastic session for you to be able to attend with me. In our session today, we're going to talk about three easy concepts for work and for life. We're going to talk about the concept of 5S. We will talk about waste identification. And finally, we'll discuss PDCA or Plan, Do, Check, Act. Now, again, all of these concepts that I'm talking to you about today can easily be applied across any industry in the entire world and in any home environment. So that is uh, the benefit and the joy that I find in being able to share this information with you that we can apply it anywhere. And you hear some of my stories along the way too. Now, the first concept we're gonna talk about today is 5S. Now, 5S stands for sort, set in order, shine, standardize, and sustain. 
The concept behind 5S originated in Japan. Now, as you can imagine, there are five Japanese words that start with S, but let's be honest, I don't speak Japanese, and even if I did, that wouldn't resonate with you. So that's why we present the information in an easy to understand format. Now, the concept behind 5S is a place for everything and everything in its place. So let me ask you a question. Do you have one of these? A utensil drawer organizer where you have a specific spot for your forks, your knives, your spoons, etc. Or maybe you have a lovely spice rack that seems to be the gift for every wedding shower on the planet. If you have one of these things, then you can absolutely utilize the 5S concept in your life. Now, this is actually a picture. Uh, I don't have a spice rack anymore, uh, but I have a spice drawer. But this is actually a picture of our utensil drawer organizer. Now, you can see that we've taken it to a different level, and actually my husband has. In there, you can see that I have spoons that are facing two different directions. Uh, to further uh, organize our space here and to make it easier for me to know which spoons I can use into the ice cream container and not bend them, uh, the, the spoons and uh, the, the large and small spoons that have the sturdier handle are facing upwards. And I can use those to dip into the ice cream container and not bend the spoon. And the spoons facing down are the ones with the softer handles. And those are the ones that we don't use for some Thing like that. So we take it to another level here at our house. Let's walk through each of the five S's. The first thing you have to do before you begin is determine the area in which you want to focus. So think of an area that you know really needs some sort of uh, organization, just like we saw in the pictures. Is it your computer desktop? Is it your office, your basement, your garage? or maybe it's even your purse. First pick the area and then follow these steps. The first step is sort. So if you remember, there used to be an HGTV show that the gentleman came into a family and he said, you need to, keep, you, you need to create a heat pile and a toss pile. That's what I'm talking about here. Go through your selected area and determine what you really actually use on a day-to-day -day basis. That goes in your keep pile. Now, things that you haven't used, or if you're doing your closet, clothes you haven't worn in an entire season, that goes in the toss pile. Now, keep in mind, toss does not mean we're going to always throw it in the garbage. Toss can mean we are recycling, and toss can also mean that we are donating it. So that's the first thing you do. At the end of this activity, you should have two piles, one keep and one toss, recycle or donate. The next step in 5S is set in order. So if I was working in my office here and I wanted to redo my desk, which by the way, I continuously improve my desk area here for function, uh, I will create my keep and toss pile, look at my desk and figure out what is the optimal location for everything that I actually need. So what do I need on a day-to-day -day basis? For me, that's two monitors that I'm looking at you through right now. Of course, my laptop, which is right down here, and my keyboard and my mouse and my calendar and a pen. Uh, that's what I need on a day-to-day -day basis. All this other stuff that's on my desk even right now, I don't need that every single day. So I will determine the most optimal layout possible. So again, in your car, in your basement, on your desktop, et cetera. That's what you're looking for uh, to be able to put your items that you decided to keep back in the most efficient manner possible. Now, of course, before we put everything back, we need to clean up the area. If you don't wanna put your stuff back in an old dirty area, vacuum the carpet, uh, wipe down with Windex, whatever it may be, power wash, if it happens to be maybe your barn, uh, that is what I'm talking about in Shine. So before we put our things back that we need in our new designated location, let's just clean up the area first. Four means standardize. So standardize means creating a system to help your items stay in order every time. And growing up, my dad would say, if you take a tool out of my toolbox or out of the garage, 
put it back where you found it. That's exactly what we're talking about here. But we're also talking about how to make that easier. So the picture on the screen right here is called a shadow board. And on the shadow board, obviously there are uh, different cutouts or colors uh, and you can quickly look at this board and determine, hey, we're, we're missing an eight inch clamp. Uh, we're missing some clamps from six and four inch. We're missing a hammer, um, some pliers, et cetera. So you can utilize these concepts. And by the way, all the concepts I'm talking to you about today are low to no cost. So you could do this by using a, maybe an extra poster board that you have at home or even utilizing um, some things from the dollar store, which I'll show you here in a minute. Uh, so again, standardize. How can we create a method in which we put the things back or replace or do it the same way every time until we make it better? And of course, our last S is sustain. That's the hardest part, ensuring that you're following that system of organization and you audit routinely. And we'll talk about auditing routinely here in just a moment, uh, but sustain is the hardest part. That means don't go back to what it used to look like. Don't fall back on, oh, I'm just going to, just going to put that cup on the, on the counter and I'm not going to put it immediately in the dishwasher. It's, it takes practice. And I always tell people, you need to give yourself at least 30 days of doing that activity. So not just 30 days pass, 30 days of actually working at your desk, or let's face it, if we work on our desk, we work five days a week and not on the weekends. So that doesn't count towards your 30 days. So 30 days of actually doing it until you make improvements again. And remember, don't slide back to what you had before. I want to show you some examples. The first one is if you are that person feeling slightly guilty right now because you know your desktop has 100 icons on it, you can do download wallpaper like the picture on my screen here. Uh, this was free and you make this the wallpaper or the background on your desktop. And this allows you to visually place your files that uh, you feel that you need on your desktop. Uh, and it's categorized into work and in personal for reference and to file. A great visual indicator of that. The next picture is obviously this is a, a maintenance area in a building. And if we walked into the area on the left, I would think, oh my gosh, that's pretty gross, right? That is not organized and clean at all. Implementing our 5S concepts, we now have parking lot or parking lanes for each of the types of machinery. Everything in the area has obviously been cleaned and painted. And there are those big yellow signs that tell you uh, what uh, piece of equipment goes in each section. Now let's talk on a more personal level. This was my refrigerator. Uh, this was the before picture of the refrigerator. And honestly, I just, I couldn't stand it anymore. I said, there's gotta be a better way to keep this organized. Because number one, my husband always asks me, what can he eat out of the refrigerator? And number two, if anything spills, we all know how it's difficult to clean one of these things. So I literally went to the Dollar Tree and got some clear bins, and now it looks like this. And when we talk about auditing, that means, are we making sure that we put things back in the way that they are designated to go back now? So we have an opportunity to do that every time we open the refrigerator. Uh, so this works well for, uh, for, first of all, for my husband, the, the clear container on the right with the red lid in there, uh, that's the leftover container. So anything in there, he's uh, welcome to eat. And uh, because quite honestly, he was eating our dinner sometime during the day. So uh, eating leftovers in a designated container is a great idea. And number two, if anything spills, it is just in that container. And I can easily wash that in the sink or I can put it in the dishwasher. Sure. Again, less than $20 to do this. And the next picture I want to show you is our linen closet upstairs. Uh, this is directly across from our laundry room. And uh, this was the bane of my existence. I could not stand looking at this. This drove me nuts. So one day, literally 20 minutes, and now it looks like this. 
And again, Dollar Tree bins, which by now, if you, I'm sure you read, it's a dollar twenty-five, not a dollar anymore. Uh, but inflation, but everything's organized. All of our uh, sheets are fitted sheets and sheet sets because I can't fold them worth a darn. I put them in those uh, plastic laundry containers up at the top, like the lime green one, so it's easy to be able to pull out. Uh, we rolled the towels, and it was also revolutionary for me to understand that. We have way too many beach towels in there. So a lot of times people ask me, where do I even begin? I feel really overwhelmed by this. Well, I want you to think of what area bugs you the most at home or at work. What area do you just think, oh, I just don't want to open that door. I don't want to go in that area or I can't find anything in my car. So again, your desk, your vehicle, your garage, your computer. Think of what bugs you the most and start there. Now we're gonna move on to the next concept. So if you are familiar with Zoom and you know how to utilize chat in the chat feature, can you please tell me uh, if we were to estimate the percentage of waste in an average process, what would that be? So if I took all the processes in the world, what percentage of waste do you believe if, is in an average process. Okay, Mary said 80, Paul said 40. We have Marilyn, we have Brad, Chris, Kimberly, 80, 95. Uh, Brad said 0.5. All right, some high number guesses there. Hey, Sarah, Not, Sarah guessed 90%. Thanks for participating. Edward guessed 85%. The average process contains, drum roll, 95% waste. Wow, right? That should be quite shocking. Uh, it, it, it's a shocking number, but I can tell you, and people ask me, do you think that's real? Yes, I do think it's real because I see this all of the time. When I work with people to improve their processes, I actually see usually around 98% waste, but on average, it's 95% waste. So you have two options here. You can sit back and say, oh, it's so bad, I'm not even gonna try. Or the right answer is we have endless opportunities for improvement. So let's talk about that. What really is waste? Uh, we typically utilize the acronym downtime for waste. So downtime stands for defects, overproduction, waiting, non-utilized talent, transportation, inventory, motion, and excess processing. So defects are, are easy, right? Something's not made the, the correct way. Uh, you see that with, with toys, right? Some, somehow a run of the toys got uh, incorrectly made and now they're a collector item. Uh, but in real life, we don't want to have defects. Uh, overproduction means producing more than is actually needed. Waiting, right? Waiting in line, uh, waiting. <laughs> Nowadays, you have to wait in your car before you go into the doctor's office. So waiting, non-utilized talent, not using people to their complete and total capabilities. Transportation can be of goods or services, but it can also be transportation of data. So are you emailing huge files back and forth to each other instead of using a, a shared location? Inventory means that we have more product or more inventory or more raw goods than we actually have orders for. Motion, bending, stretching, reaching, grabbing. Boy, over the past year, we've really learned how to set up our desk area to make it more convenient for us. And then excess processing, doing more than is actually required. So what do the eight ways really mean to you? Well, I, I encourage you and I challenge you to look for wastes in your daily processes. Um, so take a step back and look for ways. So let me talk to you about what do I really mean? Well, I worked with a company and I was observing that there was a particular individual that every time they had an email, they printed it out. Um, and, you know, you have to ask why. Why are you printing out emails, right? That's a waste of, of many kinds. Motion to get to the printer. That's a waste of, uh, obviously, of paper and ink because, of course, they printed in color, right? Uh, it was a waste of um, transportation of data to the printer, et cetera. 
Um, so that was one area in which I asked what exactly is going on. Look at how you cook a meal. So this is always an interesting conversation. When I cook or I bake, as I use the ingredient, I put it back. Uh, so I, if I'm using salt and pepper and garlic, I'll sprinkle my food with that and then I will put it back on the shelf. I don't just leave it setting out. So uh, yes, there is movement involved in there, but at the end of my activity, there is not a huge mess to clean up. And I will give an example of my dad. Uh, if you've read the book, you know that I talked. Uh, I talk about my dad in the book and my parents, my family. Uh, my dad, uh, at, at over time, uh, has been follically challenged. And uh, he used to take a shower, wash his hair, come out, of the shower, blow dry his hair, and then take his uh, and take his comb, put it underneath the water, and then wet his hair down again to style it. And my mom said to him one day, "Why are you doing that? You've you had wet hair, you dried your hair, and then you wet it again." Well, he never really thought about it. So until somebody points it out or you take a look at things from a different lens, you don't really realize how much waste there is. So we talk about the eight ways so that you know them. You recognize them, and of course, you work to eliminate them, to have more efficient processes with a predictable result. So it's the same way every time until you make it better. And the last concept we'll talk about today is PDCA, or Plan, Do, Check, Act. Now, Plan, Do, Check, Act is a continuous improvement cycle, and it allows us to really understand what problem we're trying to solve, and make some attempts at trying to permanently solve the problem and institute that as a standard moving forward. So the plan step, we hypothesize possible causes to and solutions to our problem. We have to start off though with the question of what problem are you trying to solve? 50% of your time should be uh, really understanding what is going on, gathering data or observing, things like that plan is so important to understand what you're going to do next. In the do step, that's when we actually implement a solution. This is where we go to try to solve our problem. Remember, our goal is to permanently solve our problem. And I can tell you from my life experience, most people don't want to spend a lot of time in planning. They make assumptions. Uh, they play what I call problem solving paintball. It's this, it's that, it's there. No, it has to be this. They don't take time to understand the problem that they're trying to solve, and then they end up uh, wasting time on potential solutions that don't really permanently solve our problem. After we've implemented a solution, now we need to check. So that means evaluate your results. Did your solution, your proposed solution that you just implemented, did it permanently solve your problem or did it make things worse? In the ACT step, this is where we standardize and, and make sure uh, that if our new solution has worked, we create standard work or we make this the process moving forward. If it didn't work, then we return back to the plan step, do more investigation and start again. Now I have to tell you, many people freeze, right? So they get to plan, do, check, and then they freeze. They are frozen in fear. And what I wanted to tell you is you don't have to be like that. Uh, if it doesn't work, regroup. That's why it's a circular, a circular pattern, right? When you get to the act step, you said, nope, it didn't work. We need to try again and try something different. Uh, many people either uh, in this process go right to do and they do act, do act, and they never really check or they try to implement a solution and they fall apart when that solution doesn't really solve their problem. And sometimes it's embarrassment, uh, but realize that we aren't all going to get it right the first time. Let me tell you a little story about home. We had a situation with our laundry. My husband does our laundry and I had black dress pants that when he was washing came out with white stains on it. Now, keep in mind, I didn't say, Andrew, we're going to do PDCA right now. I said, let's try to look and experiment on what's happening. It was consistent. All the black dress pants had white stains. His proposed or his hypothesis was it was the dryer sheets. So we did another load without the dryer sheets. It wasn't the dryer sheets. I still had white stains. 
And he said, maybe we need to clean the, clean the washer, right? The new washers have the clean cycle. Tried that, that didn't solve it. Again, PDCA. What we did eventually understand was that it was our laundry detergent. Arm & Hammer baking soda laundry detergent, Arm & Hammer baking soda is inherently white. I ran out, got another bottle of different laundry detergent, tried it and no more white stains. So we did PDCA without telling Andrew that we did PDCA and we were able to permanently solve our problem. No knock on Arm & Hammer, it just didn't work here. So in today's session, we learned three concepts. We talked about 5S, waste identification, and PDCA. Let's be honest, that's a lot of information to digest. But I want to remind you that you can do seemingly hard things. Go look at your utensil drawer organizer and know that you already have the skills, knowledge, and ability to do this. So now I'll open it up for any questions. What questions do you have for me? You can put it in the Q&A uh, if you are, uh, are versed with Q&A, or you can verbally say it, or you can put it in chat. Um, and I will put my contact information. You can buy my book, How to Improve Absolutely Anything on Amazon, uh, or there's a discounted rate right now on my website. And there's my contact information also. So what questions do you have for me? Skylar, do we have some questions? Yeah, I was just going to say. Uh, we do not at the moment. Okay. Uh, we just had them in our questions. They just had their answers. Um, let's see. I do want to thank all of you. Uh, we had 146 people registered today. Uh, and I just want to say thank you so much for your support. I greatly appreciate it. I, I see some uh, familiar names on the list here as I look through the participant list. Uh, feel free to reach out to me with any questions. Uh, you can utilize, again, like I said, these concepts. I have clients that are in IT, in education, in uh, the medical world, uh, in legal, uh, HR, uh, et cetera, in manufacturing. So I uh, am so excited to be able to show you how this and these concepts can work for you. Or if you just want to chat, just uh, send me a note. Just have a couple of chats here, Katie. Thanks, Colleen. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Ken. Yes, there is uh, some people add us. How do people keep writing from problem? How do you keep people from writing their solutions into their problem statements? Oh my gosh, Chris, that's a great question. Uh, I do, I'm actually teaching that this afternoon. How to write a measurable problem statement? Uh, I use a recipe for that, and uh, I have them follow a recipe. And part of that recipe is not telling me uh, what the solution is. The way I coach it is that we have a project that or a process that we're going to follow to help solve your problem. So don't try to tell me how to solve it first before we begin, right? Our project or investigation is going to lead us down the path. Now it might lead us down the path of what they think the solution is, but we need to gather data and do more investigation before that. Great question, Chris. And uh, thanks, David. Uh, Chris, if you want to email me, I'd be happy to send you the formula that I use uh, and that people uh, can easily understand uh, and, and utilize to keep them from giving the solution in the problem statement. <laughs> well, Katie, um, actually, I think we just had one. Thanks, Jared. Jared, another CI person in our area. By the way, I'm calling you from really cold Wisconsin. Uh, it was, what did I say it was, Skyler, when we got on? 20, it was uh, no, 16. 16. It's 16 degrees, a uh, couple, uh, couple inches of snow, chilly outside today. But the sun is shining, as you can see, uh, in, in my background is starting to come in through my window. So, All right, everyone. I believe we are at our time. So, Katie, thank you so much for everything. It was very nice to meet you. Your presentation was awesome. And we look forward to seeing you very soon. To everyone who participated today, thank you all. 
Um, you will receive a link to view the recording within 24 to 48 hours, and it will come from me. And like Katie said, if you do have any questions, just reach out uh, directly to her. Her information is listed there. Or if you don't have it, you can contact me and I can get you connected. Thank you again to everybody and to Katie for joining us today. Have a great rest of your evening. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day and happy holidays. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. Thanks for joining us. You're welcome. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye.